Hi, welcome. I'm Amy Luber, founder of Leading Motherhood, and I'm so excited to talk to you today because we have continued our empathetic leadership series. This last workshop, we talked about what expectant moms are looking for as we prepare to really understand what working parents, what's underneath it, right? What are they looking for from a benefit standpoint? What are they looking for for support in uh, from your company and from you as a leader? And today we're talking about a very important subject and business problem, attrition rates, turnover. It is expensive, is it not? So we are going to talk about how to reduce it. I want to talk to you about how to reduce working attrition with working parents. I recently read an article in Forbes, and I think it was a Bright Horizons uh, study that they had released that stated that over 44% of parents are looking for alternative employment right now, 44%. And that's just the people that they surveyed. So you know that that percentage has got to be higher, right? And over 90% of parents are reporting burnout and overwhelm. How many of you are parents? How many of you have ever felt burned out and over, overwhelmed and anxious? I think I did this morning. <laughs> I, I was getting my kids off to camp. And what do you know? I got to be the psychologist between a eight-year-old and a six-year-old and doing all the things and then managing meetings in between before and after. <laughs> so, you know, as parents, there's no, you know, there's points where just anxiety and overwhelm ensues. And that's, I'm afraid, the kind of the parenting gig, right? But if we're seeing 90% of parents reporting burnout and overwhelm, we're working you know, from home more, we're just in that place where work and life is just completely on top of each other, then there's no doubt that you know, we've got a big problem as employers and leaders, and we've got to solve it, right? How many of you agree? Yeah, when we are looking at attrition rates, you know, we have to replace people, we have to recruit, and it's really hard to find individuals. It's not, and our high performers are those people going through those phases in life where they're looking to become parents. They're working through some really big personal changes, right? Maybe you've got a lot of employees getting married or going through fertility uh, treatments or, you know, just transitioning to their next level in, in, in their personal journey. You've got a lot of things to, to think about. And so today I'm here to share that I think we have a better approach for solving some of these issues. When you know this many parents are, are burning out, they're looking for alternative employments, perhaps we get this opportunity now to look beyond parental leave. I said it, we wanna look beyond parental leave. Now, am I saying that parental leave does not matter? Not at all. I print a leave is huge. And if you don't already have, you know, the minimum of like 12 weeks of parental leave, I want you to start there. And I want you to go to your executives and figure out why, you know what I mean? That benefit doesn't exist because you, you just, parents, mothers, especially, they're physically having children and giving birth to our next generation. Um, I think sometimes in America, we forget we birth humans. And so, and so we get to really figure out how we're gonna, we're gonna um, provide parental leave. Bottom line, super important for both parents to get time with their kids, totally. What I'm saying though, as, as a coach and, and for those of you who, are, who may be meeting me for the first time in this workshop, um, I spent the first 18 years of my career in high performance sales. I led a sales team. Uh, and, uh, and I reached burnout, you know, I reached burnout at, at a time because I just kept performing and kept doing all the things and was caught up in all this, the things as type A high achieving women do, we just keep doing with a smile on. And so eventually burnout does catch up with you if, unless you're managing emotions in your, in your internal leadership. That happened to me. I then became a founder and through this work that I do, I now, uh, coach women really high achieving working moms to eliminate that chronic stress cycle and overwhelm that really leads to burnout. Because I want women especially and, and men, but I want, I want people to advance their careers, spend more time with loved ones, avoid burnout, relationship issues, right? Like all, if we're burned out, relationships fall apart with our kids, with our spouses and partners. 
And there's just no, there's just no need for that kind of breakdown when we get to work on our personal development, our leadership, our performance, our way that we manage emotion. And so I have this amazing opportunity to teach individuals and corporations and individually one-on-one how to manage emotions better and get into committed action when we're completing things really quickly with accuracy. And as parents, we start to really formulate this ability to context change faster. As parents, we're always context changing, right? Our brain is looking at work and then we get interrupted by, <laughs> by one of our blessings, also known as children. Um, but what happens is we have to shift our, our, um, our attention to them, right? Right away. And we're always shifting, 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 shifting. That's really difficult, but, 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 but we get to become masters of the shift. And we also get to become masters of really being able to, you know, use our boundaries, state what we need, take the breaks that we need, take PTO, you know what I mean? And get out of the doing and giving ourselves that recovery time. Because when you are emotionally, physically, and mentally, you give yourself that recovery time, you're no longer ruminating and overwhelmed and your productivity just skyrockets. So those are the things that I work on in my program. But for you today, as the employer and leaders, um, I really, really, really want to help you uh, give you a, give you some tool sets that maybe are beyond parental leave that are going to help you create a happier, more productive uh, team, right? Because we're teaching them how to integrate their life and career. That's not something that anybody gives you a pregnancy book on and tells you how to do it. It's something you either learn through trial and error. Or we can help kind of facilitate that culture and environment in a company that really just kind of wraps your arms around these employees and caregivers that are coming, you know, in and out of the workforce. They're coming out, they're going out on leave. They're leveraging that benefit. And then when they come back in, I think we have a great opportunity to re-onboard them. And we're going to talk about what that looks like today. And so um, I want to take you through a recap. If you didn't see the expectant mother training, I'm going to give you a very, very, very high level quick recap on the things that we talked about. That's really important things to take back to your C-level uh, organization so that you can tie together why this is important because it all drives back to the bottom line. If you're working for an organization and that is the focus, you might be in a high growth organization. And of course, we all know we can't have businesses without revenue. And so that I want to drive that back home. And at the same time, we get to support our employees and support the performance of the organization so that, uh, you know, they can come back in a way that's going to enable their performance long term and avoid that discussion and that issue that is so extremely expensive of, I got to leave, I can't take this, I'm leaving, and you got to go find an employee to replace them with. That's what I want you to avoid. You know, the employees that really are worth, uh, you know, in a great match for your organization, you're on the same vision, you want to retain those people. So, so we want to get beyond parental leave, depending on, and I'm going to share my slides here in just a second. Um, depending on, you know, that, that parent's um, experience, you know, they could be going through a situation where, you know, they spent 12 weeks just recuperating from some really heavy, heavy things in the birthing experience. Maybe, and God forbid, but this does happen, they're coming back from losing a pregnancy or they're coming back from just a time in, where their child is in the NICU. And you guys, this is a time to really step into empathy. Anytime our employees are going out and giving care to another human being in any capacity, today we happen to be talking about parenthood, but we really get to kind of like humanize the experience. And yes, we're gonna draw it back to the dollars, but let's add some empathy into it. You know, so I know that you are all that way because otherwise you wouldn't be watching. So I want to give you just a really quick 
So on, on you know, what we talked about last time, right? right. So last time we really talked about, here's step number one, when working with expected parents, never assume they're not going to return to work, especially moms. That has been my, I felt it for all of you women in the room. I just, you know, like, let's just call an elephant an elephant. But there's a bias at times, right? Depending on your leader. <laughs> but there is a bias at times where you're not going to return to work because you're going to be a working mom. That's, that's just not true. High achieving working moms. These are the ones that I work. They want to excel in career and life, right? And over 47% of millennial households, mom is actually the breadwinner. And so we're seeing now this huge, huge, huge shift, which is, which is amazing that, you know, we're coming together and we're saying like, yeah, we get to share an equity at home. We get to have both have careers and it takes both male and females to come together and, and make that successfully happen. But now 63% of families are dual income. You know, the highest percentage, uh, women are, are the highest, have the highest education level in history. Yay. It's great. Here's the downside. If you're not handling that transition into parenthood and back into the workplace like, with a little bit of care, business to a whole nother direction or anything like that. But these are things today we're going to talk about because I want you to avoid this. One and a half times to two, and a, two times or more, depending on the situation, you're going to pay. So if a person is making, let's just say they're an exception. And they're making $200,000 plus, right? A lot of you might be working in tech organizations. You guys are definitely paying high salaries, right? And so you're going to pay that cost. You're going to double that when somebody leaves. And I'm not the first one to ever say this. I realize you've probably seen this stat a lot, but, but let's really think about that. You know, we don't want to have this cost. We also have the cost of silent depression. When people are burned out, if 90% plus parents are burned out, guess what they're suffering with? with anxiety, lack of performance. And so we see depression, anxiety at high, high levels. And that's not a good thing because guess what? It impacts your bottom line. It impacts your bottom line. Take a look at this. This is a calculator from the centers of depression. And uh, I can send this to anybody. If you DM me, um, you know, I can send you this calculator and you can run the numbers on your own organization. Um, let's say you have a 25 person company. If your company is losing, uh, if your company has any kind of depression present, right? If any of your employees are struggling, this is what you're losing per year. It's because they're going to call it sick for them because they're not going to be as productive. They're not going to be able to focus on the task at hand to be able to move things forward. And that's a big problem. Let's say you have a thousand person company. Obviously, the number grows, more people, more potential for depression and things like that. You can be losing up to $2 million. And if you're a very large company in the fortune level companies out there, you could be well over 100 and $29 million lost per year due to this. So this is not something that we can just ignore, even if you're just focused on the bottom line. And so last time we talked about what are expected moms really looking for, right? And they're looking, they're asking themselves, okay, I'm nervous about birthing, who isn't? Um, can I afford childcare? How am I going to be treated when I get back? And that belonging piece is huge because if you're, um, if your employees aren't feeling like they belong or they, they're coming back and they're like, oh man, I was the first one to have the baby on my team. And I don't know how my boss and my, my, um, my colleagues are going to treat me when I get back. I really love my career, but are they going to get it? Are they going to understand that I got to leave for a doctor's appointment or my nanny? bailed on me again and I've got to just like 
I've got to figure this childcare thing out. Oh, I feel guilty. I feel guilty, right? How many of you have had mom guilt? We've all had mom guilt. And so you're always constantly asking, how's the workload going to get done? Am I going to meet my expectations at home and at work? How am I going to do this without the sacrifice? Because we've been told in society, you've got to sacrifice something if you're going to have both. That's simply not true, but we get to really work on uh, that leadership development for sure. It just has to happen. Without it, things, things do break down. And so last time we talked about the top, um, the top benefits that people would see. They want to see flexibility. They want, and this is both, by the way, both parents. They want to see flexibility, paid leave, uh, financial benefits, obviously, like being able to uh, have a, a savings account or a set aside financial account to use towards, you know, child care, because we know both parents are working on child care costs, unless you have some miraculous, um, you know, fairy or grandmother come down <laughs> and watch your kids, which most people don't. Um, shipping is something, you know, that a, a lot of new, a lot of companies are now adopting these things. You know, the apps, of course, are out there for healthcare and mental uh, mindfulness and those kind of things for, for employees to leverage. Um, maybe you provide breast pumps if you're requiring people to come into the office, you know, providing your, a room uh, where they can a lactation room with breast pumps so that they don't have to remember to bring that each and every time can be super helpful. Providing lactation consulting classes or the, or the benefit to maybe use uh, someone in, in that, in the, in a network, in a healthcare network that you've partnered with to be able to provide lactation consulting. Um, believe it or not, breastfeeding is one of the hardest things anybody can do. Um, you know, fertility, adoption subsidies, you name it. Uh, wellness clinics are popping up. There's just really some cool benefits out there that the companies are, are adopting. So if you're looking for those ideas, those, you know, those might be some ways that, you know, you can, you can start to um, build those things into your company culture. And if you're part of a parent ERG and you're trying to really vouch for working parents, these are some ideas. Um, childcare support, right? A, a stipend. Um, I think I just mentioned the pretext childcare account. On-site daycare, if that makes sense for your business. Um, and of course, discounts to different things, right? Activities and, and different things like that. So going back to the number one benefit, right? Going back to the number one, flexibility. Let's certainly talk about what that looks like. Because flexibility is not just in, um, it is not just in the, uh, I'm going to stop sharing here. Um, flexibility is not just in, um, you know, saying like, oh, yeah, you can take off for a doctor's appointment or you can take off, uh, you know, time for, um, you know, school event or, uh, you know, te parent teacher conferences or things like that. While that's important, flexibility can also be in a re onboarding program. So let's dig in. I'm going to use I'm going to use my my whiteboard for the re onboarding program um, because. We want to just kind of visualize the timing, right? So let's say your maternity leave, let's just say you're an average 12 weeks, right? You've given, you've given 12 fully paid weeks um, to someone. Now, on average, um, there's been quite a few surveys out there. The last one that I read, I think it was from, I think it was from a group called Mother Honestly. It's an organization um, that does some amazing work out there. On behalf of, uh, you know, working parents and also trying to work with employers to educate them. I think they did a survey and, and parents were really saying, like, I really want at least an average of eight months, right, with my child. I really want that time, uh, you know, to really adjust. Because in those 12 weeks, right, parents are trying to adjust to new child care, trusting somebody with their child, right? Uh, birth, birthing, like just, I'm just going to say birthing recovery because birthing recovery could literally take 12 weeks. I've been through those kind of experiences a couple of times <laughs> and, and I can tell you it takes, it's not like we're sitting around eating bonbons, right? Am I right, ladies? Um, 
and you know child care they're they're also trying to figure out the dual parent role right they're trying to figure out how to communicate they're trying to figure out okay, how you do this i do this you do this i do this and you get on a meeting i'm going to take care of the kids like the constant ping-ponging that goes on when we're now juggling um, all of that and the extra expenses, right? How do we uh, how do we really budget and get used to this, you know, this new big expense of always having to buy diapers and formula and uh, you know, you name it. There's like every time you turn around, everybody needs money and it all goes to the kids. <laughs> so, you know, that's what they're doing, right? So I want to just give that context to any of you watching this that may not be parents yet um, or just may not be in that because, we'll, it, you know, I think the greatest thing about our society now and our focus on like diversity and inclusion is we get to understand what the other person is going through, right? We may not be in their shoes and that's fine, but, but like, let's understand a minute about what's actually the reality is, right? And it is what it is. And, but then we get to support each other. Okay. So, so let's say they go there. So then they're coming back in. And I'm just going to draw, you know what? I'm just going to draw so y'all can see this. Let's just sit down a little bit. Um, so, so then they're coming back in. And let's just call it week, week one, right? What I want to, what to really encourage you to do as a leader, and you, even if your company doesn't have like an overall policy of re onboarding, you could do this one on one with your team, right? You could do this with an employee. Week one, I really want you to focus on bringing them and reintegrating back to the team. And this is more of a social thing, right? This is more of a social thing because when we work on um, being able to reintegrate someone and getting them to, you know, just share, like, Share about your, your new baby, how it was believed, like what were the things that were most challenging to you? What were the greatest things about leave? What did you, you know, like what are you expecting? You know, like what are you kind of like, what do you want to share with us, right? Getting them to just kind of like feel that they're in this safe environment. You're providing this place of belonging and inclus inclusive, um, inclusivity where you get where well, that person is feeling really part of a team. And that is the critical piece. If we don't get this in week one, then we risk that person getting so overwhelmed and the transition back into a full-time job and working through all of these things here, which requires a lot of emotion and psychological processing, um, that we that's where attrition comes up, right? If they don't feel like they belong and they don't feel like their team gets them or cares. So I would say reintegrating, you could do Zoom sessions, you could do a Zoom lunch, you could do a happy hour, you could do whatever it is, but really making sure you have that time as a group. Also, getting them back into one on ones, getting them back into one on ones. So we do a one on one with them, welcome them back as a team, make that fun, make that very social, but then doing a one on one as a manager to make sure that you guys are on total clear communication. And when you do the one on one as a manager, oh shoot, I Doing that one-on-one -on -one as a manager, you are going to want to make sure that um, that uh, you talk about your expectations and their expectations. It's not just top down. It's not just top down. You get to also see like what is their vision? What's the employee vision? And you know what, I have to take a minute to really laugh and I'm going to point this out because this is the funny part about doing these kind of presentations. <laughs> I totally wrote with permanent marker up here on this first half. So that's going to be funny. Um, <laughs> so if you see me not being able to erase things on the top, that's why. Um, <laughs> I just had a laugh. Um, okay, so, so we want to talk about expectations and vision. Okay, and then week two, right, is, and, and also, Offering, I gotta also mention this. The flexibility here is key. If you are able 
to offer them part-time. Maybe you do part-time like two to three days a week, right? Two to three days a week. And you can do that maybe for the first like month, you know? And when they're coming in like that and really focusing on the very high, most highly pressing issues, and then you're still able to maybe delegate throughout the team for a couple of weeks as they reintegrate, focus on those really high priority issues first, because then, you know, then they get, they get used to just like focusing on that and then going back to the parenting thing and then coming back in. And it's giving them the ability to start, you know, practicing that motion. Then we can start, you know, integrating them back into a full workload, like maybe after a month or something. If you can, if you can make that work longer, like for a full quarter, maybe they're doing two to three days for like the first um, month. And then the second month, maybe they go into four days. And then by the end of the third month, they're going full time. Awesome. But realizing that many of you maybe don't have that complete bandwidth 100% in your company. So, but any way that you can do this and offer this, you know, is amazing. And so through week two, and I'm just going to go through a, a month, we'll just call it one month. Um, but, you know, week two, you want to make sure that the, the one on ones are, are consistent so that you can really check in on emotional well being. Emotional well being, any physical needs that they, you know, might need, any physical. Uh, maybe if they're traveling, you know, that's a big one. We have to ask when, when does that employee feel like they can travel again? Not just expecting that they're going to go hop on a plane the minute they get back from maternity leave. Uh, and the reason why I bring that up, some of you might say, well, yeah, I, I wouldn't even think about that. But some of you leaders may have a very, you know, this person may have had a very heavy travel schedule. And so, and so, you know, trying to work some of those things in over time is much easier than just throwing that requirement on them immediately. And perhaps you, you are able to say, we're going to work back up to a schedule of travel and things like that at X time, like after your first quarter back. But until then, let's work on a ramped up period. Like maybe you take one trip away, right? The, you know, the travel kind of stuff, and I'll just put travel here. Um, the travel kind of stuff is, um, is a tough one. You still have clients to meet. You still have people to collaborate with, but we can leverage Zoom for so many things. And I think even if you are managing a play that has a lot of travel on their schedule, like I think it's okay to go to a client and say, hey, you know what? I'm not back to traveling quite yet. We're, I'm, I'm getting re-onboarded and integrated into the role after having a child. And I think most clients are totally fine with that. Like they get it, right? They're more than likely parents themselves, right? And so, or they've worked with parents and, and, and they get it, right? And so really establishing what does that look like? That's a big one for expectations. That's a big one for expectations. If you're managing somebody that's maybe like, maybe have a manufacturing company or something like that, um, you know, and you've got people that are really having to be present um, in, uh, in their role and they have to be in the office or in your, you know, maybe you have a factory or something, maybe, you know, really physically present. We also get to talk about their physical needs. So it's not just emotional, but physical requirements. How long are they able to stand up? You know, after leave, they might be getting super tired still. They might still be breastfeeding their child. They might still be going through a lot of those things. And so it's not just emotional, it's also physical. Like, how are you feeling? What are your needs? Do you need, you know, do they need a couple of therapy sessions? A lot of people that are experiencing, uh, you know, some of these, some of these um, hurdles, the physical hurdles, can also be having some mental, um, some mental things. So that when we, so that when we talk about these things, mental is huge, and um, and so when we talk about mental uh, assistance, how do we bring that up as a leader? Here's what I suggest. You know, I, I'm I'm a postpartum depression survivor two times, and and I will tell you this. 
it's a lot of times moms don't even realize what they're going through because they're just in a cycle of doing and they're always wanting to try to be better and sometimes they land on perfectionism and trying to push themselves and they really are good at it about masking having any kind of issue and so i know that in my own experience i'll just share a personal story i had you know i had postpartum anxiety pretty bad i had uh, a little bit of psychosis after my firstborn where i actually hallucinated and thought people were stealing my baby and I publicly talk about this stuff because it gives you an example of really some things that can go on that just you're like, where did that come from? This person is completely like, they don't have these issues. And then when they have their kids, it's like comes out of left field. So, so here's, here's why I bring that up. These things can happen and they can be very isolated events. And it can be a very long time before someone actually says like, oh, this totally happened to me. And I, because there's a stigma, there is shame and guilt. And if they're trying to be the perfectionist, putting on a smile that everything is better, then they totally feel like a failure, right? Are they going to come to you, your boss, their boss and say, I totally failed. I totally like, I can't handle this right now. No, more than likely they're not. 65% of women especially they get postpartum depression, never actually address it until something else later break, breaks down. For me, I was breaking down physically my health after like seven, like, well, after like five years after having kids. And, and so it really took a breakdown in my marriage, my performance at work. I was, I was really a high performer in sales. But then I started to get kind of grouchy to people and I just had my short fuse. I just, and I didn't even realize I was doing it. It wasn't my intention. I just, my boss would be like, what is, why do you snap at that person? You know? And so if you're seeing your employees come back and they're, and they're maybe really good at hiding um, their behavior, or, you know, maybe you, you've noticed very subtle differences in their behavior, but they're really good at hiding it you're seeing a little subtle things. They're just snappy. They seem off. Like they're just not the same coming back. Well, they're not the same. They just had kids. And so checking in on that mental health thing is so huge. And using your company, you know, culture and policies to be an empathetic leader where you can provide uh, a safe place for them to maybe address things with you one-on-one, -on -one, giving them that open space to say like, hey, we're, I'm not judging here at all, but like, you know, I'm seeing a couple of things like, you know, let's really help you during this time of transition and realizing that they're in a time of transition, right? And giving and opening that conversation can be really helpful. Don't expect your employee to come to you because more than likely they're not going to. Okay, so as we work through week three and four, you know, if we get them back in, then we start to, you know, maybe we start to reintegrate more of a work, more work. Uh, towards them if they're ready. Um, otherwise, stay to this two to three day a week kind of responsibility. But giving them a checklist of things like of outstanding items is really, really helpful. Like, okay, this is where we're at now after two weeks. This is awesome. And we're and showing them the progress. Focus on the results that they're creating and the progress that they're making for you and your company giving them that value back, right? And then in return, they're going to be able to, and, and ask them, like, share with me, like, you know, how you're moving the ball forward on some things that, and, and things that you're working on that maybe we weren't aware of, like giving them that opportunity to share if they're working long, long hours. Part of the article that I shared with you before, part of that study mentioned that, you know, the burnout is such a high level right now because, um, people are not, um, people are not finding time to really unwind. They're going from parenting to work, parenting to work, parenting to work, and they're not making time for themselves. So encourage that they do encourage that they get that break, you know, and not just on the way to driveline to pick up their kids or, you know, literally walking across the house to get their baby from the nanny or whatever that case is or down the street to the daycare 
but really getting that time in to take a break. That is a huge thing that you can encourage as a leader to really help their performance. Because when we recover mentally, physically, and emotionally, we are able to really get back at it later on. But if your employee is saying like, oh, I was up all night with a baby and I was up all night trying to work from like, you know, 10 to 11. And then, you know, then I'm up two times a night. Well, you know that that person's going to burn out and turn out of your organization at that rate. That's just burnout waiting to happen. And so you can get ahead of it by having those kind of conversations and coaching them into taking those mental breaks, right? And take in creating this culture of like, we're gonna get to the we're gonna get to the end result, but let's let's do that in a healthy way. And then by week four, if we're using this four week kind of plan, then we can put all these things together and we can really, you know, hopefully in that third week meeting, we're kind of asking like, are you ready to kind of come back full time? And then we're back full time. We're back in a great groove. We've established like a great plan of like this is what's you know this is what's going to work, and we can kind of create that final final plan of that workflow but what that's going to look like maybe for them you know if they're an infant phase they've got a brand new baby you know like let them know like hey let's work on like this over the next quarter and just see if this kind of flow works for you and this schedule works for everybody and allows us to all get the job done and then we'll address it again in another quarter and we'll see what kind of works because if the more you let them know that they, you understand that as their kids grow up, their just whole needs are going to change again and again. Change is going to be inevitable, and that that's where that flexibility piece comes in. Parents are looking for flexibility, but this is the long-term flexibility. It's not just being able to um, say, "Well, I want a flexible schedule of of just being able to be off work or have." unlimited PTO, it's really about teaching how to integrate these things in a way, depending on the need of the parent, to be able to just get the job done whenever you need it, right? And that's where we get to trust as leaders that our employees are going to be in level four responsibility and, and being able to kind of be a, a CEO of their own position, or if they're in sales, like their own little territory or, you know, whatever it is. Um, and so that's, that's really what I suggest to the re-onboarding. It's just really, it's that, it's that back and forth, constant communication, uh, level setting, expectation setting, um, and things that you can really, really work on as a team to be able to do that together. And so I encourage you to do that. And I, I would give you a formalized plan to take with you, but it's really a customized conversation. This is not something that I'm going to just give you a template and say, go do this right? This is an ongoing conversation based on the role of the, the person, based on your company's needs. You know what that is. Um, and based on, you know, where that person is at in their journey. Um, there's just so many things that can happen after a child um, comes along into an employee's life that, you know, it's really important that we take that time to do one-on-one -on -one work with them. And as you can see, Permanent marker on my board. <laughs> oops, 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 oops. Um, we'll figure that piece out later. But I hope this is helpful to you. I hope this is helpful to you in really looking at how to go beyond parental leave and helping create a culture where your employees can thrive instead of just thrive. Let's illuminate burnout together. If you want more um, information about any of the things we talked about today, and if you're looking for help in coaching your employees to a next level of performance, avoiding burnout, and creating a culture where working parents thrive, please reach out to me. The link's below. It's amyleelooper.com. You can find all the corporate and individual coaching programs available. And I'm super flexible when I work with people. We can formulate a corporate program and roll that out to your team. I can work one-on-one -on -one with individuals. Whatever works for you, I'm game for. All I want to do, my mission in life is to elevate that experience of working parenthood because it is so important to our society, to the performance of your company and the happiness of your employees. So thank you so much for today. I appreciate you all and we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.